Hello, everyone, and welcome to our lunch and uh, learn session today. Thank you for coming along. Uh, now, I'll get started. Uh, before before I start, can you please please put yourself on mute? Um, now, what I'll I'll run through uh, introduction and some housekeeping and important notices, and then um, we'll start our presentation. Now, today we have the um, the team from ADHA joining me, uh, co-facilitating our session today. So I've got Nikki and Jenny. Uh, thank you both for coming. And uh, also um, I, we have James Bevan, our Head of uh, Customer and Operations in ZMED, and Natalie Vinton as well, who will be joining us, um, Head of Development. And my name is Fane. I look after our training and implementation team. So welcome. Um, so just a few housekeeping. Uh, so once again, please put yourself on mute um, once you dial in. Um, now on the to the oh, right hand side of your screen, you see a panel there, and where you can see a little chat box. So throughout our sessions, if you have any questions, please send it through. At the end of our um, webinar today, towards the end of our sessions, we will have questions and answers. So please send through your questions. Um, if there's anything that we're unable to answer during the session, we'll definitely get back to you. Um, and you can also leave us your details. Uh, now, if you experience any issues with audio, um, we do we do recommend we do recommend you redialing into the webinar. Um, through your through your computer. Uh, just a few important notices uh, to cover. We've got um, future lunch and learns are available on our website, so keep an eye out for that. And the links are available. We all our, our lunch and learn sessions, including today, it's recorded. I understand some people are unable to attend, so it'll be available online afterwards. If you have any questions um, after our session today, feel free to send them through to implementation at zedmed.com.au. Um, now I'm going to hand over to uh, Nicole and Jenny from um, the ADHA. Nicole, can you hear me? Hi, Jenny, can you hear me? I can't, Jenny. Jenny. Jenny's. It? It's this Jenny. It says mute her. Sing, sing her voice. Okay. Sorry, everyone. Uh, we're just working through um, getting Jenny and Nicola back on the line. Won't be long. Hi. 
Hi, can you hear me now? It's Jenny here. Hi, Jenny. Yes, I can. Okay, great. Sorry. It oh, looks okay. like the system muted me and I couldn't undo it myself. Okay. Are you able to get Nikki on the line? Um, okay, thanks. Oh, there you are. Hello, thank you so much. <laughs> it's Nikki here. That's great for um, our digital technology today. So thank you very much, uh, Fani, for your introduction. So uh, let's make a start. So if you could enter to the next slide. We would first like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands we're meeting on and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge and extend that respect to other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and elders from other communities today who may be joining us. And the next slide. So today's webinar, um, we will provide an overview of the roadmap for electronic prescriptions. We'll explain some of the EP core features and benefits and Jenny will go through a case study with you. And we'll also discuss the readiness for electronic prescriptions and then we'll be um, having a ZMed software demonstration. Next slide, please. So the Department of Health and the agency have collaborated to develop the technical components of electronic prescriptions, the conformance framework and a national change and adoption activities. And as you can see, work on the electronic prescriptions commenced in 2018. The technical team has invested significant effort in developing the technical framework. Now the technical framework has been co-designed with key stakeholders through the agency's electronic prescriptions technical working group. Participants included the medical software industry, health professionals peak bodies, consumers and government. The technical framework details the requirements for the software providers to make changes to their software products. Now this ensures softwares will be aligned with the electronic prescriptions legislative framework and ensures adherence to privacy and security principles and maintains patient choice. And of course, change in adoption activities is also a significant piece of this work to ensure that prescribers and dispensers and also our consumers are aware of how electronic prescriptions will work and what they need to do to be prepared. You'll hear more of this throughout this presentation this afternoon. Thanks, Fanny. The next one. Now, here's a high level view of electronic prescriptions implementation timeline, outlining Australian government's recent measures announced in the response to COVID-19 and the longer term EP solution. So currently we've got a special arrangement in place, which I'm sure majority of you here online have heard, would be aware that um, prescribers can send a digital image of a prescription to the pharmacy. And then this can be either faxed, email or via a text message after the prescription of that prescription after they've had that telehealth consultation. Now this arrangement is an interim solution only and has been announced in response to the COVID-19 pandemic national health plan. It is not the same thing as electronic prescriptions. Implementation of electronic prescriptions has been accelerated in response to the COVID-19 and this will be progressively rolled out from the end of this month. Now the token model will be and then the token model will be available. So in a nutshell, prescribers will be able to generate an electronic prescription, send that as a token, which is a unique QR code, to the patient electronically, and at the pharmacy end, the pharmacist will scan the QR code and download the prescription details. Now this solution has been part of the electronic prescriptions plan for some time, but it's just been accelerated to begin earlier to assist with the COVID-19 pandemic planning. Now this token electronic prescription model will be the focus of our presentation today. And then finally, from late 2020, the active script list model of electronic prescriptions, in addition to the token model, will be available. And I'll go through the differences between the token model and the active script list on a, site, on a slide soon. And now for our patients, the option to receive a, patient, a paper prescription will always exist even when EP is available for prescribers. So, 
what is electronic prescriptions? Electronic prescriptions is basically an option for a prescriber and their patients to use an electronic prescription as an alternative to a paper prescription. Now previously only a paper prescription signed by a prescriber has, was the legal form from which medicines would be, could be supplied. Now changes to the Commonwealth legislation commenced on the 31st of October 2019, recognising an electronic prescription as an alternative legal form by which medicines could be supplied under the pharmaceutical benefits and states and territories are working on finalising details underneath this arrangement. Patients and prescribers will be able to choose between a paper or an electronic prescription. And it's important to know that electronic prescriptions is not mandatory. Thanks, Fani. Next slide. So why are electronic prescriptions important? They're important because it provides a greater choice for patients. It improves efficiency in prescribing and dispensing medications, and it may help reduce errors and it provides an opportunity to protect community members and healthcare providers from exposure to infectious diseases and it supports digital health services such as telehealth services to ensure continuity of the patient care. And next slide. This slide here you can see outlines everyone who can participate and use electronic prescriptions. Now we've touched on prescribers and dispensers and just to clarify both prescribers and dispensers will require the electronic prescription capability within their software to generate and dispense electronic prescriptions. Prescribers, dispensers, software providers and consumers Everyone has a role to play. Consumers are at the centre of this and can choose to have a new prescription in electronic prescription form. There's just a couple of things to note. The consumer may must have an IHI or an individual healthcare identifier to participate and existing paper prescriptions cannot be converted into an electronic prescription. Next slide, Fani. So let's have a quick look now at the two models of electronic prescriptions. First one is a token model. It's a unique QR barcode and it is evidence of a prescription and not a legal document. It's only the manner in which the electronic prescription is accessed. The patient can choose to receive this token via SMS or email and in itself is not a legal document. Now Jenny will go through some screenshots in a few slides that will help you visualise the end-to-end -end process from generating to dispensing electronic prescriptions. Now the barcode is not a legal document and only one prescription will be included with each token. And the token model will be available from late this month. And the second option is the active script list. Now following the presentation of an adequate identifier, the dispenser can retrieve prescription details for a patient from the ASL. This model will primarily overcome the issue of lost tokens and really be suitable for those on multiple medications and assist with medication management and adherence. The active script list model is also useful if a subject of care is not able to receive and send tokens to a pharmacy. You know, they might be have poor digital health literacy, they might not have a mobile phone, a computer, or even, even internet access. So they will be able to have alternative um, a paper prescription. So as I stated, the focus of today's uh, webinar is on electronic prescriptions. Um, in the short term, we'll be taking the token model on the left. An active script list is more the complete solution and will be rolled out towards the end of 2020. And next slide, thanks, Fani. All right, so next up, uh, let's have a look at this case study. It follows the story of James. He is a 72-year-old man with ongoing chronic conditions. He has hypertension, diabetes, and he lives home alone. He needs a supply of his regular medicines and will need to make an appointment with his doctor to get a new prescription. Now, James's medical conditions and his age make him vulnerable to serious illness if he was to contract COVID-19, so he is currently self-isolating at home. The clinic advises James that it would be best to book a telehealth consultation to avoid him having to come into the clinic. So the doctor conducts a telehealth consultation with James over the phone and they discuss his prescription options. The doctor does ask James if he's comfortable with receiving an electronic prescription so that he doesn't need to risk coming into the clinic. 
James is actually fairly comfortable using his smartphone, so he is happy to be sent a token for his electronic prescription via SMS. James then rings his local pharmacy to double check that they are able to assist him with dispensing the script and that they do have the medicine in stock. Once confirmed, James sends his token to the pharmacy's mobile number and the pharmacy is able to dispense it for him. We'll move on to the next slide now, thanks. So let's talk through the steps in that example. So the doctor issued an electronic script, they sent it to the patient during the consultation and the token was received straight away on the patient's device. One thing I want to address is that the doctor can only generate an electronic prescription using conformant prescribing software with the latest electronic prescribing capability. So you'll see a demonstration of this later on. But the same does apply to pharmacies as well. They will only be able to dispense electronic prescriptions if they also have this functionality enabled on their end. And this is why it was important for James to ring his pharmacy and make sure that they could actually help him with dispensing the prescription token because we are still in the very early days of this rollout. So it might take a bit of time for everyone to jump on board. Now, going back to our example, once the patient received the token, they do have some options about what they can do next. So they can still visit the pharmacy in person to show them the token on their phone and get it dispensed um, at the pharmacy. Or alternatively, as was the case with James, if the patient was isolating at home, for example, they could actually forward the SMS or email with their token to their pharmacy of choice so that they can actually dispense it remotely. Next slide, thanks. So next I want to cover a couple of different scenarios and questions that you might uh, come across and I'll clarify how you can actually deal with these in your practice. So first up, you might come across a patient who isn't able to receive a token. So it might be an elderly patient or someone who's not comfortable using their phone. So in this case, the patient may provide their carer's contact details to receive the token on their behalf, or they can still choose to receive a paper prescription if they prefer. So they definitely have a couple of options there. The second case is when a token is not received by the patient, and it could be because it got sent to the wrong number, for example. To avoid this, we do recommend that prescribers confirm the receipt of the token before they end the consultation. Now, if an error has occurred, prescribers will be able to cancel the prescription and generate a new token. And number three here touches on prescription repeats. So repeat tokens are generated by the dispensing pharmacy. And again, they're sent to the patient's device via SMS or email, for example. And the patient can then take their repeat token to any pharmacy that can dispense electronic prescriptions. Next slide. The next scenario is a very common question we've been asked um, about what happens if a patient deletes an SMS or an email with their token. And the answer is that it can actually be reissued by the prescriber without generating a brand new script. So the patient in this case would simply receive a new SMS or an email. Number five, uh, what safeguards prevent patients using tokens at multiple pharmacies? So once a token is scanned and dispensed by the pharmacy, it actually becomes invalid and can't be used again. Um, so this is something that is actually registered within the prescription delivery service. So if a second pharmacy tried to access it, they wouldn't be able to proceed with the dispensing. And the last question we've got there touches on the legislative requirements. So there is a lot of work happening across Australia at the moment um, in this space to make sure that every individual state and territory is aligned with the Commonwealth changes. And the best advice we can give you at the moment is to stay in touch with your clinical peak bodies and PHNs to get up-to-date information about 
whether or not you can actually proceed to generate electronic prescriptions in your area. Next slide, thanks. So the next couple of slides are there to demonstrate what patients will be able to see when they receive their token. So um, there may be some slight variations depending on the prescription delivery service uh, that you use, whether it's uh, ERX or MediSecure, but apart from maybe the appearance or the wording, um, the details will actually be the same. So essentially, this is what you'll be looking for when you're confirming with a patient that they have received their token. It will come across as a regular text message and it'll have a link that takes them to the QR code you can see in the third picture there. It will display things such as the drug name and the quantity. So the patient can actually differentiate between uh, the tokens if they have multiple ones for different medicines. Because you have to remember you will be issuing a different token for each medicine prescribed. Next slide. And here, oh, back one, please. Thank you. Um, here we've got some examples of the display the patient will see if the script has expired, if it has already been dispensed, or if it has been cancelled by the prescriber. So the QR code won't actually come up, it will um, just display the relevant message um, to the patient. And next. Um, this just demonstrates to you what happens at the pharmacy's end. So the token is scanned and all the script details can be retrieved by the dispensing pharmacist. Once uh, a script has been processed, the QR code becomes invalid, so it can't be used more than once. Next slide, thanks. In terms of preparing for using electronic prescriptions, there are a couple of core requirements that need to be in place within your practice. So most importantly, you will need to be connected to the HI service. And this might mean that your practice will need to be registered for a HPIO number or have things like a NASH certificate installed. Um, you will also need to be using a prescription delivery service, um, but we will hear more on the specifics during the demonstration. You can also prepare by updating the contact details you have on file for all of your patients and their carers. As I mentioned earlier, please do stay up to date with the legislative amendments by your relevant states and territories, and also check our website for more information and updates as they come through. Next slide, thanks. The links are available for you on the slide and you'll get a copy of these later on. Um, we do have a number of very useful FAQs that have been published uh, on the website that really clarify some of the detail uh, quite well around the token model. And we will soon be also uploading fact sheets and e-learning modules, so keep an eye on those as we continue to upload more resources. Um, and now for the fun part, I think we'll hand over to the team from ZMed to do a demonstration. Thanks. Let me just unmute myself. Sorry about that. Thank you, <laughs> Nikki and Jenny. Um, now, I will we'll, um, take you through uh, this uh, ZMed's uh, requirements and specifics and how you, what you need to check in ZMed. Um, how will doctor uh, prescribe electronically? And um, yeah, continue to send through your questions um, via chat and we'll put them up in the end. Um, so uh, in um, ZMED, you must be on version, on ZMED version 32. This is our latest release. And very happy and proud to say we've tested um, e-prescribing yesterday in one of our medical centers and it was very successful. Um, both on um, ZMED's end and also uh, the pharmacy side. Um, so you must be on uh, ZMED version 32, um, as mentioned by Jenny. Uh, this is uh, to have this um, working at your clinic, you need to get your um, HI service running, which it'll require you to get a NASH certificate installed in ZMED. Um, and also the doctors must be registered with ERX or MediSecure for electronic transfer of prescriptions. I will show you in, um, in ZMED where to check for that. 
Um, just a, a checklist in ZMAT. So again, version 32. Um, that's uh, the version e-prescribing is available. Uh, your practice must um, also have a HBIO saved in practice details. So these are the things I'll take you through today. Um, a practice um, setup, we'll also look at how you can save the doctor's um, HPII number into the um, doctor profile and how you can search patients IHI. And also I'll take you through um, when a doctor prescribe um, the NDN, NDN to process of what that looks like. Um, and there's also a, um, a settings in, in ZMED Clinical that you will need to enable. Um, now I'm just gonna bring up my demonstration. So um, bear in mind, these are just test patients that we're looking at today. Um, and I'll just show you our website before I start my demonstration. So on our website, you've got the green help button up the top. Once you click onto that, it'll take you to our um, Confluence homepage. You'll see e-prescribing. So you get recordings and guides and instructions on what I'm taking you through today um, through here. So feel free to jump online and have a look after. Okay, so um, in ZMED, once your HI service been um, it's up and running, uh, your net that's your NASH certificate's been installed. Uh, first check I'll take you through it's a practice setup. So up the top where I've got management, practice setup, and practice. Now this is where your HPIO is uh, saved in ZMED, um, and you can if it's not there you can simply search for it. Um, and then if I search for mine, for example, it'll, it'll populate and then I can save it um, into practice details. So that's the first one in practice details. The next part is how to search for doctor's HPII number. So that's under practice setup, doctors, find treating doctors. So I will need to look up the treating doctor. And here, the search HI uh, service. This will again search for the doctor's um, HBII, and then you can save it into their profile. Now, while I'm in this screen, if the doctor is registered um, with ERX, you will see a just switch branch here. You will see an installed. You'll see the ERX um, entity ID um, loaded into their profile. And if they're with MediSecure, um, their prescriber number um, must be entered into their profile as well. So just a couple of things to look out for. So we've looked at practice and uh, doctor setup. I'll show you how to look up patients um, IHI. So I've got a test patient here. Now on the left hand side where you see eHealth, so uh, in patient details, click onto eHealth. And if this is not here, it'll give you a little red X on the left hand side. Um, if I clear this one, for example, you can see IHI number is not there. And then I can simply go search for IHI and then it'll populate here. And now it's back to green again. Now these must be in place first um, be before a doctor can um, describe electronically for that patient. So now I'm gonna go into clinical. This is ZMED clinical. Um, in terms of settings, I'm just gonna click uh, at tools up the top here. So I've got tools, global options. Once you upgrade to version 32, um, go to the global options um, settings, click on to drugs. Now under the drugs tabs, down the bottom left, you've got prescription exchange service. So that'll tell you um, whether you're with ERX. If, you, if you've been um, registered and installed and your ERX been installed onto your server, what you'll see the ERX option selected and there's ERX um, details here and also um, just like MediSecure, MediSecure will be selected um, if, if your doctor's uh, registered with MediSecure. For electronic prescribing, 
uh, for ZMIT version 32, you will need to enable this. So by default, it's turned off. So for your practice, you just need to enable this once. Um, and it's global, so that uh, you can enable it from any computer. So just tick Enable Electronic Prescribing and click OK. Now that's done. We'll go into a patient encounter um, just to see how uh, the process of electronic prescribing. So if I start an encounter here, and then I'll go into the drugs module, and I'll go and prescribe a new drugs. For example, I'll go with um, Amoxicillin, so if I choose to go with this one, for example, this is an authority drug. So um, you still need to go through, uh, as, as a doctor, what you're doing currently, nothing changes. You still need to come into the script detail screen, fill this out, and then what you see down the bottom here is prescribe electronically. So once you enable that option in uh, global options. Now this additional bo um, button will show up at the bottom. So if you're below version 32, you won't see it. So if I click on to prescribe electronically, this is just um, giving me the approval number and I'll click authority. So this is the additional screen that comes up. Um, electronic prescription. Now the first section up the top, that's the doctor's, uh, treating doctor's details. The second section, that's the patient's details. And then you've got script details. And then you've got this field here, clinical information. So if you've defined a problem, your diagnosis, it'll auto populate here. Otherwise you can, you can end the, te uh, you can free text. So this is um, optional. Now, we also have a script for emergency supply. So doctors currently, um, you know, most likely they fax the pharmacy if they, a script, if they owe them a script. Now the good news with, it, with electronic prescribing is that you don't have to fax it anymore. You can simply tick this and then it'll give you the, it'll enable email. And this is because you can only email, uh, because it's script owing, um, you email this to the pharmacy. So you will need to get the pharmacy's email address and the script will be sent to them. So that's script owing. Um, now SMS and email. So in terms of token delivery, the SMS details and email de uh, information that comes up here, this is coming straight from the patient's file. So if you whatever mobile number that they have in file, that's what's going to come up and also email address. You can override it if the patient authorized someone else to pick up their, um, their script on their behalf. Um, for example, it could be a partner or a daughter. Uh, the token can be um, sent via SMS to a different phone number. It's just a matter of overriding it here. Um, this is a token delivered per script. So whatever number you put in here, it'll stay for the remind, uh, to however long this encounter opens. Um, if the patient don't want electronic token, but prefer a printout, um, then you can just simply print the token out. It's just the same token that's sent uh, electronic via SMS or email. Um, now the SMS and email options, they are not sent from the SMS you set up in your ZMED. This is sent by ERX or MediSecure. So it's sent by them, it's not sent from your practice. And also just to, um, to note, the doctor can only choose to send SMS or email, it cannot be both. And if the patient preferred to send an SMS and paper token, they can do so, and also email or email and paper token. So if I go um, prescribe electronically, um, now once I prescribe electronically, this will be sent instantly. The patient will receive it while they're inside the room with the doctor. 
So if I prescribe, mine is trying to print, um, but what's uh, showing now, today's script left hand side, you'll see a new icon that's for e-prescribing and my script is sitting, it's there. Um, and if I want to prescribe a different medication, I can I can do the same thing. I, let me just go do another one. So if I'm looking for Panadol, for example, prescribe electronically. So see, I entered a text here earlier. So this remains throughout the duration of the encounter. Um, and if I send this to implementation at sedmed.com.au, and I'll go prescribe electronically. So again, it parks it on the left-hand side. Uh, now I'm going to right-click just to show you the options. If I right-click on this, I can change the problem. So that's if the patient have multiple problems. I can cancel the script. So if I cancel this, it'll cancel the token. Um, in terms of reprinting a token, it cannot be reprint. Uh, sorry, it cannot be resent electronically. If a patient um, loses the text message or accidentally deleted, and also the email, they can contact their doctor, and the doctor can only reprint the token and maybe fax it or email it to them. It cannot be resent from ZMED via SMS or email again. So that's just one thing um, to be noted as well. So if I close my encounter, now on the left-hand side, I'm going to go into medications and if I expand this, you can see that it's got the um, e-prescribing little picture and anything with the red X, it just means that that's been cancelled. So that QR code is, is invalid. Now, if a doctor wants to, if I'm just going to go back here, if they want to prescribe again, um, they can just simply right click and do an exact re-prescribe. Just want to show you the options that comes up next. Sorry, I also have SafeScript installed on mine. It's just uh, doing a SafeScript check. So if I do a re-prescribe, it'll still give me an option whether I want to prescribe um, and print it out on a normal script or prescribe electronically. And this is only for scripts that were issued electronically um, before. So I can still go prescribe electronically and then it'll bring me to the screen. So what will that, um, so basically what that means is that when uh, um, a doctor um, comes to have a look at the history again, they can expand this and look out for, um, for the active script. So these ones, the tokens are still, are still active and this one it's been canceled. So just going to show you what it looks like on um, the patient's phone. Just going to skip through here. So this is one we tested yesterday. So receive a text message. What you'll see, you won't see the patient's full name. You'll see the patient's initial with a link. Once they open that, you've got the barcode um, and also just like email. If it's received by email, it says your electronic um, prescription. Here's a link, you click on it and you can scan it um, at the, the pharmacy when you're there. Now I'm just going to stop my en uh, encounter. We're going to, so that's basically how it works in ZMIT. Um, that's the end to end of, 
of how a doctor um, can prescribe electronically. I've got some questions that I'll put up on the screen. Um, now, in terms of the, the questions we've got, we've got a lot coming through. Um, I'll, I'll put up what I can. For those of you um, who we haven't um, got your questions up, uh, I do apologise. We will send a reply back to you via uh, email. I'm going to just put them up here. And Nikki and Jenny, can you still hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Oh, good. Yep. Um, so these are some of the questions that were sent through. Um, Natalie, are you on the phone? Yes, I am here. Oh. <clears throat> Hi, Nat. Um, I've got a, a question. It's probably for you or um, anyone who can answer. The fir first one, when do e-scripts expire once it's been uh, issued? The same, the, the rules um, for the expiration of scripts are the same between paper-based prescriptions and electronic prescriptions. Um, so I, I think it varies uh, um, state to state um, and uh, for different types of um, drugs. Oh, good. But basically the rules are exactly the same. Okay. Um, next one, how can I find a participating eScript chemist? Uh, that one is a, a little bit of a hairy one at the moment. Um, the, um, the ADHA and the Department of Health are working through some solutions to allow um, uh, uh, um, clinics to, to determine which um, uh, pharmacies uh, nearby have, um, uh, have uh, RE prescribing enabled. Um, so uh, yeah, I can't answer that at this point. One of the things that we will be, what we, we suggest that you do is certainly to uh, approach your local pharmacies um, and uh, and ask them uh, when they're going when they're going to have that capability. Um, but there will be some things coming from the Department of Health and uh, the Australian Digital Health Agency um, in the not too distant future um, that should help that as well. Um, I, uh, I I can't give you anything concrete at this point. Um, uh, uh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> It's James, yeah, I'm just gonna, sorry if I didn't jump in and just want to expand on, on what Nat was saying. Um, basically what we're getting at here is we'd really encourage practices to um, talk to their local network of pharmacies and have that um, two-way dialogue um, so that you can inform your doctors and your patients where e-prescribing um, will be ready. There's a lot of work uh, going into the communications around that, things like you know, pharmacies having uh, things on their websites and stickers on the front saying that they're e-prescribing ready. So it's a case of you know while we're in this rollout phase, just being really, really clear in your communication and dialogue with your um, network of, of pharmacies around you. Awesome, thank you. Our next question, are QR codes displayed on traditional scripts and e-scripts the same? No, they are not. So the the QR codes that you would see on um, on a paper based prescription are the um, uh, the sort of the ERX um, uh, um, uh, QR code. Um, the the QR code for the electronic prescribing is actually a different barcode, um, but it effectively uses the same networks and achieves the same sort of thing. There's just no actual physical piece of paper with it, uh, except of course for the um, for the paper based token. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah, not quite the same thing, but basically achieves the same thing okay. in the end. Uh, so the actually, thing, I should clarify. Yeah. I should I should actually clarify that. So um, the so the QR code that's received, that, um, you know, which is effectively the token, um, that QR code is basically a pointer to the actual legal document that is the the, the uh, prescription in the um, the the uh, prescribing um, uh, uh, the electronic say ERX or MediSecure. So that, that's that's kind of the difference, like I pointed to that um, and then it, and basically it's used to uh, by the pharmacy to actually uh, get the information about that um, but that script. So uh, and the um, the barcode on the paper-based description is basically uh, encodes basically the same information and allows the the, um, the pharmacy software to collect get the same information into their uh, you know um, onto their screens basically. But yeah, the difference is that one actually is sort of uh, 
one points to a legal document and one is uh, sort of it just is a pointer to the information on the actual physical piece of paper. Thank you, Nat. Uh, the next two questions, uh, I think they've got, should have the same answer to it. So what if SMS is not received, just like email? Um, if it's not received, I mean, um, uh, then, uh, so in the short term, because we don't currently support, um, uh, we don't currently support, um, uh, resending um, the, the the prescription, uh, the, sorry, the token. Um, we I would suggest uh, you could cancel the um, script and send it again. Um, it's probably worthwhile um, considering um, printing a paper token um, for the patient um, when you do a script. Um, uh, if 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 you know if it's convenient. Um, just in case it doesn't, I mean, it should it should be working basically. But if, for instance, the phone number is incorrect or something like that, yeah, there's there's that that there's a bit of an issue there. So um, if they don't receive it uh, currently, I mean, you can you can cancel this the prescription and um, prescribe it again is one way to do it. Um, that doesn't cause any problems or anything like that um, to, to 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 do that. So okay, good, yeah. thank you, and also. Um, just on that, as mentioned before, the SMS and email is sent by um, ERX or MediSecure, depending who you're with. So it's not sent from the email or SMS set up in your ZMED. Yeah, currently, um, um, that yeah, that is something currently. that will um, uh, that we will be um, uh, looking at implementing in in the in, in coming releases. Um, uh, because there will be um, a cost associated um, with SMSing. Um, um, at some point in the future, the government is currently covering the cost of the SMSs, um, but that will change, I think, in um, uh, later this year, so November or um, October. Um, so at that point, there will be um, there will be some cost involved, um, and we're just working out the details of how that will work. Um, and so at that point, there will be an option to use um, to send the uh, SMS from the uh, from your from ZMed. Um, uh, via your preferred um, SMS provider um, and and obviously your own email server. Okay, uh, next question. How are repeat prescriptions uh, prescriptions processed? Do I need the original doc token? Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Oh, yep. yeah. yeah. Would you like me to answer that we one? Can, yeah, yeah you, you go ahead. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, so in terms of repeat prescriptions, patients won't need to present an original token to the pharmacy. They will just uh, show them the repeat token that they got um, once the original script was dispensed for them. So um, they'll have an updated token basically in their phone. Um, and again, if they do lose their token or if they accidentally have deleted that text message, um, I'm fairly certain they'll have an opportunity to speak to their pharmacy and get them to um, reissue it um, if possible. Thanks. Next one. Won't James Pharmacy or James's Pharmacy tell us of its customers on its website that it's able to receive and dispense electronic prescriptions? I think that's a fantastic idea. Mm. <laughs> absolutely. Yes, um, that, that I think is what um, what was one of the things that is being encouraged um, uh, for, for all the pharmacists to do to actually get out there and say yes we support um, e-prescribing. Yeah and uh, one for you Nat, can the tokens be sent to both Apple and Android devices? Yeah so the tokens are literally just an SMS and effective and a link to a web page so there's no uh, requirement of, of device at the other end as long as um, the, the um, patient can um, uh, can click an, a web link in in an in an SMS. Um, they will be able to um, read the the token. It it would yeah. it's technically supported on uh, the old Windows phones. Uh, you know, um, one of the things about it's basically exactly the same as a boarding pass for um for a um for, for getting onto an aeroplane. Uh, you receive a text. You click on the link and you get the you get the barcode. So there's no requirement from the, in terms of operating system, uh, phone operating system. Next awesome. Time. 
Um, can doctors send directly to pharmacy? So um, I did cover it that it's uh, if it's script owing, then um, it's emailed to the pharmacy. What if it's uh, the patient don't want it to be sent to them, but send directly to the pharmacy? Um, yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> So, uh, I do want to take uh, that one or you're right? Yeah, yeah. Do you, want to, do you want to talk a bit about that one? <laughs> yeah, sure. So really the design of electronic prescriptions is really to give the patient the choice. Um, this really includes the choice of receiving a paper or electronic prescription and also the choice of which pharmacy to go to. Um, so they could certainly have that conversation with, uh, with their doctor, but it's really up to the individual patient. So they're really recommending that um, the doctor doesn't actually send directly to their pharmacy that the patient has control of that. Yeah, so I think that, that that's one of the points that I think is uh, important to note is that um, the the patient, like if the if the um, uh, token is received in an email, the patient can then forward that email to somebody else, and the same same with the um, with the uh, an SMS. Uh, there's no requirement that it has to stay on the device that it's been received on. Um, it's 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 just a piece of electronic information, so it can actually be forwarded um, to to somebody else, and that includes um, potentially forwarding to a to a um, to a pharmacy, um, at you know, and and the patient has the ability to decide that. Okay. Um. Good. The next one, uh, resending the token to patient's carer, for example, do we need to get a written consent on this? Um. I'm not sure about that one in terms of the. The, the legality of those things. Um, somebody from the ADHA, you... Hugh? <laughs> um, no, they don't need to get written consent. Um, this would be an example similar to, say, if we're talking about regular paper prescriptions, if a patient decided to give their script to a family member or a friend to take it to the pharmacy for them, um, they would be able to do that and there wouldn't be any um, legal issues with doing that. So certainly um, if you get sort of, I guess, verbal authorization from the patient that they want you to send the token to a different number, um, it's up to the patient to give you that direction. It doesn't need to be anything written um, for you to do that. Okay. And what if there are repeats on the scripts? So the way that this works is that just like a, a actually, do you, I'll, I might as well just say because I started. Uh, basically, um, so it, this works in incredibly, uh, so exactly the same way as the current system. So uh, the, when the doctor prescribes something, the patient gets a paper-based prescription, that is one legal document. Um, then they go to the pharmacy and that legal document is then basically, um, it's been, uh, um, it's like cancelled or it's, it's dispensed. So that legal that 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 script is now um, no longer you know a valid script in in that sense. And then for, for repeats, the the, um, the the repeat script is a new script, a new legal document. And that's exactly the same way with um uh, with 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 the way the electronic prescribing works. So the patient uh, receives the initial um uh, electronic the token for the initial script, and then they go to the um to the pharmacy um. The pharmacist dispenses that um, that electronic um, script, and so therefore that token is no longer um, a valid token. Effectively, you can't actually then use that anywhere else. And um, then the patient is issued with a new um, uh, token for a um, for a repeat script from the pharmacy. So yeah, okay. that's basically how it works. Um, how long? Should the doctor save the token on patient file? Um, I don't. I'm actually not quite sure that um, it, it's the same requirement. I believe that um, in terms of um, more other clinical information. Um, but does anybody from the ADHA have something to comment on with that one? Comment. Have something to say about that? <laughs> um, it's not Nikki here. Look, yeah. So if you're talking about a token as in that's a that's actually a prescription it would be exactly the same that you'd have to keep on your on your file that you would normally do with an ordinary prescription um but if we want to get a better answer on this if um uh, Fani could you unmute Vandana or 
Kate Alice and yeah. um, one of those will be able to um, help us with this. Hey um, everyone, it's Kate Ellis um, on the line. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, and you're spot on, Nikki. It's basically Thanks, the same Kate. requirements for paper scripts is what it would be for um, token model. And that's um, also dependent on the state and territory legislation. So the requirements would be the same. Um, and also I'll, I'll just say this, um, that um, uh, we, there are, the government has, uh, has uh, there are requirements um, in, of the software to actually store um, uh, like audit audit trails and, and logs. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, we have all the information about the prescription and we, we store it away in the database. Um, we also, um, at this point, don't allow you to delete um, a, um, a electronic prescription so that it's actually visible on the screen. Um, uh, and that's part of that um, that um, that government requirement to 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 basically keep that information there. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Um, is each token sent by SMS an individual SMS per medication? Correct. Um, unlike yes. paper-based um, scripts, yeah, um, uh, it's it's one per medication. Um, so, like paper-based scripts, you might have up to three, for instance, depending on um, the, depending on all sorts of things. Um, but yeah, in this case, it's one um, individual, one token per uh, medication. So, effectively, for electronic scripts, uh, electronic prescriptions, there is only one, um, basically, medication per electronic, um, per electronic prescription. Okay. Uh, question, did ADHA say the consumer, the patient, needed to have a IHI number? Will this be a problem? Yes. So um, I can answer that one for you. So currently everyone, um, if you've got a Medicare card or a, um, a, you know, you're a DVA, everyone is already automatically listed or given an IHI, an individual healthcare identifier number. Um, so everyone's automatically given that. Um, it's not connected to anything else other than themselves. It's not the Medicare card. The Medicare card obviously can be um, linked to, um, you know, there's a family, whereas the IHI is simply individual and everyone actually has been given one. You can't opt out of that. Okay, um, thank you. Would scripts issued by a prescribing be uploaded to my health record? I'm happy to answer that as well. Um, so the prescription itself will not be uploaded to a patient's my health record, but if a pharmacy that was dispensing a prescription um, decided to upload the dispensing history, the dispense record for that prescription to a patient's My Health record that could do that. Um, if the patient had a My Health record and if the patient um, was happy for them to upload that information, they still do have the ability not to upload prescription um, dispensing records to a My Health record um, if a patient doesn't want to do that. Um, but they are essentially separate sort of systems. I guess on that, um, so would, would scripts be issued, um, be uploaded? If your practice is connected and currently already doing that, there are mechanisms to um, stop the upload? Yeah, we don't currently support that, I don't believe. Okay. Fane, do you want to answer the next one? Because I don't know. Oh yeah, next one, do you have to log in as admin to look up HBI? It's, um, you need to have the correct permissions to be able to to look up the uh, practice um, HBIO and also um, access doctors, the treating doctor's profile and patient's IHI. So um, yeah, you, you need to have the correct permissions under security to do that. Um, I believe the patient's IHI is uh, pretty broad. Uh, I, um, I think most people, most, um, Accounts. Oh, the roles have that. that. Yeah, yes. yeah. Also, um, the patient's IHI can be, and this is actually to answer the next question as well. The patient's IHI is, can be looked up automatically um, overnight. You can set the system to 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 look those up. And um, in the future, um, uh, in a future release, we'll be 
um, automatically um, doing it for every IHI, I believe is actually part of uh, another uh, uh, our ADHA um, industry offer that we're going to be, that we're working on. Um, basically, when the patient makes an appointment, uh, we will automatically look up the um, patient's IHI and then potentially also when they um, attend um, the appointment, we will also be looking up the patient's IHI. Yep. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, if I search the doctor's HBI number and it comes up with an error, so this is a common error message we get as well, uh, WSE0035. Um, we do recommend if you're unable to, uh, if there's no results when you search for doctor's IHI, please contact um, the, I think it's the My Health Record number um, or Department of Health. Uh, they do have the, um, they should be able to, to help you with that error message. So it's not, not so much a ZMED thing, it's just ZMED is unable to retrieve the HPII for that doctor. Yeah, they can contract APRA to get that number. Yeah, APRA. Okay. Um, good. Uh, what about authority prescriptions? Can those uh, be done electronically? Yes. Um, the example I, I took you through earlier was a authority script. Um, so everything remains the same. The steps you currently take in terms of describing that in ZMED. Um, so you can absolutely do that. It can be sent electronically. Um, next question, can you do an electronic script and print one as well? Not for the same script because the electronic prescription, um, the actual legal document is the um, basically the piece of data that's in the, um, the, um, the prescription delivery of, um, service or what we used to call PEZ um, system. Whereas mm -hmm. um, for a paper-based prescription, the legal document is actually the, the piece of paper that you give to the patient. So you can't have um, the piece, a piece of paper that represents this, that, that, same, that same script. That's why um, the, um, the, uh, the paper token was, uh, that's what, what the paper token represents. Okay. Uh, why can't the token be resent electronically? Uh, so, and uh, I think uh, it's, it's worthwhile um, uh, just to sort of saying this. Um, there's been a few questions about, you know, why can't I do this and why can't I do that? Um, we have been um, uh, we have been part of the uh, fast track industry offer from the ADHA um, to implement um, e electronic prescribing basically as soon as we can. Um, so as part of that, they um, had a reduced. Um, uh, set of conformance points so that we could get this out um, as quickly as possible under the current um, uh, coronavirus sort of uh, um, a crisis basically. Um, and so there are some things that we haven't implemented as yet, but will be implemented um, in an update coming very soon. Uh, one of those things is the uh, resending of the token. Um, that will be happening like, yeah, we're looking at it uh, like sort of early June timeframe to be able to do that. So yeah, you can actually um, cancel the script and recreate the script if you need to, if you need to resend um, the token. Uh, we do allow a reprint of the, of the paper um, um, token. Um, so, and that might be sufficient in many, in, in many cases, um, but we obviously understand that, you know, some people would want it to be resent to their mobile device or, you know, via, uh, via email. Um, so uh, we are we are, we're cognizant of that, and we will be um, releasing the ability to do that as soon as we possibly can. Um, so yeah, uh, there was one question about um, the cost of SMSs, which I think I should also address. Um, you know, how it's going to get expensive, and and um, and you know, we'll we'll, we'll just uh, choose to send them via email. I believe that that actually that that decision has to be made by the patient, not by um, the the clinic. So I, as far as I know, and maybe the guys from the ADHA can um, can talk to this, but um, I'm pretty sure that it's up to the patient how it's sent to them, not um, not the clinic. Um, somebody from the ADHA want to comment on that? I, I agree on that point. It is up to the patient to decide um, the mechanism by which they receive the token, um, but the doctor can ask the patient um, whether they prefer to get an electronic or a paper script. Yeah, correct. Yeah. 
Okay, and um, I've got a, a couple of more coming through. Uh, one is if a um, clinic decide to opt in for this, do they get any incentive from the government? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, answer. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. now. Not, not, not yeah. that I'm aware of, and, and I haven't heard any any rumours uh, or anything like that that there will be incentives. So, yeah, um, I think that largely um, uh, patients will will drive the adoption of this. So, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and when will ZMED version 32 be released? Uh, so it's in at um, a couple of pilot sites now. Um, uh, we're looking at release next week, um, uh, depending on a few factors. Um, yeah, so initially it will only, it will be, um, the electronic prescribing functionality will be available in Victoria only. We are looking at getting con uh, basically conformance or, you know, um, uh, have it working for um, the other states. Um, I think New South Wales is a possibility um, sooner rather than later. Uh, if we do that, we will release um, a, 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 a patch release that will allow um, allow that. Um, and each state has different requirements and um, different um, levels of um, of conformance. So it is a bit of a uh, a tricky um, process. Uh, and we're you know, but we are um, talking to each of the um, uh, uh, jurisdictions to to make sure that we um, that we uh, have the software available as soon as we can for each jurisdiction. Um, uh, South Australia and Queensland currently um, uh, need legislation to pass for, um, for us to have, our, uh, to have electronic prescribing uh, working in those, um, in those uh, states. Um, they apparently have um, legislation uh, in the process of um, going through um, their parliaments. Um, uh, but we have to we have to wait until until that goes through to to have that enabled in 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 those two states. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think that um, uh, what what I'd like to do, I just want to go back and and do a rerun of the electronic prescribing in ZMED um, for those who missed it. These questions have we've got up and 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 more that we have, we will put them up on our um. On our Confluence link as uh, a frequently asked questions and I'll just show you where that will be um, loaded so our webinar is um, recorded as mentioned earlier and on our uh, website you've got the help icon up the top once you click onto that you'll see e-prescribing on the left hand side now um, this page will have FAQs as well and we'll put the questions and answers um, there as well so um, uh, a few requests coming through just to to show the e-prescribing again, and I'll do an authority script um, like I did before. So again, start the encounter and go into um, prescribe a new drug. So if I'm looking for a authority drug like this one, for example, brings me to the script details. Uh, doctor then put in the dosage, uh, frequency and instructions and down the bottom you've got prescribe electronically. Now information on the script details remains the same. So you can see your quantity repeats, um, you've got your PPA status as well and you can see authorities ticked. So if I go prescribe electronically, Um, it should bring me to the authority screen where the doctor would normally call the hotline to get a approval number. So just put in a dummy one for now. So this is the authority screen. I then click authority. Currently they do to get the script parked and ready to print. So once I pr um, click authority, it'll then bring me to this uh, electronic prescription screen where a problem will populate or the doctor can free text here and select a, uh, a token delivery method, whether that's going to be email or SMS um, 
and they can also um, choose to have a uh, the token printed out. So if an email and um, SMS not received by the patient while they're there, it's worth just printing out um, a paper token for them. So um, prescribe electronically, it'll then park it on the left hand side here. And if for whatever reason a doctor w uh, wishes to cancel the token, they can simply right click and cancel, um, cancel the script and that'll be cancelled straight away. So um, if I close this and I'll just show you what it looks like. Under medications on the left, you can medications on the left. Um, don't don't take me to the next screen. Yeah, medications on the left. If I expand that, I can also right click, and that's where I can reprint the token if the patient comes back the next day, for example, or call up to say that I've lost my token, reprint it, and then it can be posted or faxed to them. Um, I think that's all we have today. That anything. Uh, anyone else would like to add anything from ADHA, uh, James or Nat? Actually, just one thing I just wanted to say in terms of the cancellation of the tokens uh, or the scripts. At the moment, there is a difference between the way that the um, the way that uh, ERX and MediSecure implement this. So, for ERX, if you cancel the token, um, it will only cancel. Oh, sorry, cancel the prescription. It'll only cancel the prescription. Um, um, uh, but won't cancel any of the repeats. Um, uh, we will be implementing the ability, uh, which that which has been called the cease, to allow um, you to cease and to to basically cancel the prescription and any um, any um, uh, any uh, repeats. Um, for MediSecure, if you cancel the token, uh, sorry, cancel the script, it will actually cancel the script and any repeats. Um, in in one in in that one thing, so effectively that's the same as the cease from um, from MediSecure. Um, so yeah, so currently just for for ERX, sorry for ERX, I mean, uh, so for uh, for ERX, it only cancels uh, the 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 initial um, uh, script, um, but for MediSecure, it actually cancels the script and any repeats in this initial version. That's it for me, I think. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, it's James here. I just wanted to, while we've got a little bit of time left, um, and I'm going to, nah, sorry, I'm going to put you on the spot just slightly. There's obviously, um, there has been part of the accelerator program to bring e-prescribing into the market as soon as we possibly can. That still yep. leaves the broader e-prescribing program. Might be worth, if um, we can summarise what the difference is between the fast track or the accelerated program and the full load of e-prescribing. Uh, okay, so the major differences uh, um, are um, that uh, as part of the, uh, the, the uh, actually to be completely honest, this is actually a bit of a moving target at the moment <laughs> uh, because the the um, the the full um, electronic prescribing industry offer is at being actively um, updated. Um, but um, uh, some of the things, oh sorry, is somebody going to say something? Sorry. No? Okay. Uh, so, in, in terms of the big differences, um, uh, the full electronic prescribing requires us to implement um, uh, some security features in in ZMed. Um, for instance, um, uh, having timeouts for um, uh, for a user if the user walks away from the computer, um, the practice can choose to um, to have it so that the that the um, the software will require a login before you can continue, um, and there's a, very, a few other things along that 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 um, uh, along that path. There are also things like, um, uh, and this is also dependent on the state, but um, uh, there are a few things like you know prescribing um, uh, Schedule Eight drugs requires uh, authentication um, before you can actually prescribe it. Um, I'm just trying to think. There's actually a whole lot of uh, sort of technical requirements um, that we we chose to uh, sorry that they 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 relaxed to to, to speed it up. Um, uh, but a lot a lot of it is to do with uh, state-based requirements. Um, uh, for instance, uh, in Tasmania, the, there's some pretty strict requirements in terms of um, uh, what happens with uh, scripts going to um, uh, the point of um, uh, point of uh, to, the, to a particular pharmacy, basically. So, 
um, uh, yeah, so and, and each, each, each state has different ones and, and, and so that's all being basically combined into um, as much as possible into the, the main um, uh, slow track, sorry, I shouldn't call it slow track, the full e-prescribing industry offer. Um, uh, you have put me a little bit on the spot, James, because uh, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling to remember all of the rest. Of, there's, a, there's a significant number of actual technical ones. Oh, I should actually say, so, so there's, um, there's also the, um, I, I don't think it's actually required um, uh, under the electronic prescribing, but as part of that, a part of it, we will be um, implementing um, the ability to um, uh, modify a script. So um, to, to, like after it's been created to, the, to, to modify a script, um, for ERX, for instance, that that will actually send through a, a specific request to to change the to the the, um, the the script. For MediSecure, they don't actually support that, so we'll actually be cancelling the script and creating a new one. Um, uh, there's also the um, the cease versus um, versus cancel functionality that we'll be adding, um, and also the uh, reissuing the um, electronic token. Um, we'll 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 is part of, I believe, is part of the slow track, but we'll, we'll be implementing that as well. Um, I'm trying to think, I think they're the, those those last like two or three things um, were actually kind of the biggest things that uh, that uh, we'll be will be releasing as part of the the, um, the full e-prescribing stuff. But there's a, a bunch of security stuff and, and a lot of state-based requirements. So. Yeah. That, thanks. I think the the major point with that is that um, the accelerated um, program is is pretty full featured. Um, it, it's not like there's been a lot of corners cut, um, particularly around yeah. things like testing. It's um, I, I mean it, it's very fully featured. And and um, I just wanted one uh, to put one more uh, out there. Uh, maybe just ask the ADHA team. We're getting a lot of queries in in chat asking when. Um, e-prescribing will be available in their individual states. Um, we know that there's a lot of um, you know, parliamentary work and compliance work and so on and so forth going on behind the scenes. Is there a centralised resource or where should people go to if they've got queries about what um, is going on in their particular state uh, regarding this um, release? We might throw that one on to Kate or Vandana if they're still on the line. Yeah, hi Jenny. Yes, it's Vandana here. I'm still on the line. Um, and uh, we look, we know there's a centralized resource being created. So um, what I would sort of um, suggest in the interim, because um, I think um, one of you mentioned that the Department of Health, of course, is working um, at the moment with those states and territories and it's rapidly evolving. So we don't have a, a timeline or sort of a, um, a resource to direct everyone to just as yet, but we know that's not too far. So as soon as that becomes available, James, how about we uh, provide a link and if that could be circulated to all of the attendees? That'd be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. And we'll definitely have, so the other place to sort of look out for updates would be our electronic prescribing webpage. We've got uh, a section for prescribers and dispensers. So um, once we have that information, we'll sort of reference um, and include links to that on our website as well. So that's the other place to sort of go to um, and check out for, uh, for updates in relation to, um, yeah, um, the legislation and, and really all of the other information as well. Brilliant, thank you. No problem. That's everything awesome. from me. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's a, a wrap basically. Uh, we'll have, uh, like I said, we'll have the recording up. Uh, we'll update um, all the questions that came in. Uh, we'll put the answers on our website and uh, we're looking to do another session in the next couple of weeks, so look out online and also um, for emails um, coming through. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to just uh, e email it to implementation at zmed.com.au. Other than that, thank you um, to the ADHA adoption team, uh, Nikki and Jenny for um, the presentation today. Also, James and Nat um, for coming along to our Lunch and Learn session. Enjoy everybody. Thanks Thank you for very having much, us. Thanks. Bye bye.